So now that we understand the concepts of artificial neural networks and deep learning, let's mess around with it. It's surprisingly easy to do. The folks behind TensorFlow at Google have created a nice little website called playground.tensorflow.org that lets us experiment with creating our own neural networks. And uh, you don't have to write a line of code to do it. So it's a great way to get sort of a hands-on intuitive feel of how they work. So let's dive in. So head over to playground.tensorflow.org and you should see a screen like this. You can follow along here or just watch me do it, but I definitely encourage you to play around with this yourself and get sort of a intuitive hands-on feel of how deep learning works. This is a very powerful thing if you can understand what's going on in this web page. So what we're trying to do here is classify a bunch of points just based on their location in this 2D image. So this is our training data set, if you will. We have a bunch of points here and the ones in the middle are classified as blue and the ones on the outside are classified as orange. So our objective is to create a neural network that given no prior knowledge, uh, can actually figure out if a given point should be blue or orange and predict successfully which classification it should be. So think of this as our training data, okay? We know ahead of time what the correct classifications are for each one of these points. And we're going to use this information to train our neural network to hopefully learn that stuff in the middle should be blue and stuff on the outside should be orange. Now here we have a diagram of the neural network itself and we can play around with this, we can manipulate it, we can add layers to it, take layers out, add more neurons to layers, whatever you wanna do. Let's review what's going on here. So first of all, we're selecting the data set that we wanna play with. We're starting with this default one that's called circle. The inputs are simply the X and Y coordinates, the uh, vertical and horizontal position of each data point. So as our neural network is given a point to classify, all it has to work with are those two values, its horizontal position and its vertical position and those start off as equally weighted, being horizontal or vertical. So we can define the position of any one of these points in terms of its horizontal and vertical position. For example, this point here would have a horizontal position of negative one and a vertical position of about negative five. And then we feed it into our network. You can see that these input nodes have connections to each one of these four neurons in our hidden layer, and we can manipulate the weights between each one of these connections to create the learning that we want. Those in turn feed into two output neurons here that will ultimately uh, decide which classification we want at the end of the day. So keep in mind, this is a binary classification problem. It's either blue or orange. So at the end of the day, we just need a, a single signal really. And that's what comes into this output here. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. What it's going to do is start a bunch of iterations where it learns from this training data. So we're gonna keep feeding it input from this training data set. And as it goes, as it iterates through it, it will start to reinforce the connections that lead to the correct classifications uh, through gradient descent or some similar mechanism, right? And if we do that enough times, it should converge to a neural network that is capable of reliably classifying these things. Let's hit play and just watch it in action. So keep your eye on that image to the right there. All right, you can see that we've already converged on a solution. I can go ahead and pause that now. And pretty cool stuff. So you can see it has successfully created this pattern where stuff that fits into this middle area here is classified as blue and stuff on the outside is classified as orange. So we can dive into what actually happened here. The thickness of all these connections represent their weights. So you can see the individual weights that are wired between each one of these neurons. We start off here. And you can see these are more or less equally weighted. Uh, well, not exactly equally. Some of these are, are kind of weak but what it leads to is this behavior in the middle. So we start off with equally weighted X and Y coordinates. Those go to this layer here. So for example, this hidden layer here, this neuron is saying, I want to weight things a little bit more heavily in this corner, okay? And things that are like in the lower left-hand corner, not so much. And then this other one is picking out stuff on the top and bottom. This one's a little bit more diagonal to the bottom right. And this one's even more bottom right heavy. And if you combine these things together, you end up with these output layers that look like this, okay? And so we have we end up with these two blobby things where we're sort of giving a boost to things on the right and giving a boost to things that lie within sort of this uh, more blobby circular area. And then when we combine those together, we end up with our final output that looks like this. Now this might look different from run to run. You know, there is some random, uh, some randomness to how this is all initialized. Do we actually even need a deep neural network to do this though? Uh, one optimization thing is to remove layers and see if you can get away with it. Maybe we don't even need deep learning. I mean, really, this is kind of a simple thing. You know, stuff in the middle is blue, stuff on the outside is orange. Let's go ahead and uh, remove one of these neurons from the output layer. Again, all we need is a binary result anyway. Can it still work? It does. In fact, it's just as quick. So 
Do I even need that layer at all? Let's go ahead and remove that final layer at all. Still works, right? So for this very basic problem, I don't even need to do deep learning. All I have here is a single layer. So this is just, it's not even a multi-layer perceptron. It's just a perceptron. Do I even need four neurons in there? Well, I think maybe I do, but this one here isn't really doing much, right? All it's doing is basically doing a pass-through, and the inputs coming into it have been weighted down to pretty much nothing, so I bet I don't even need that one. Let's get rid of it. it still works. Isn't that kind of cool? I mean, think about that. We only have three artificial neurons, and that's all it takes to do this problem. I mean, compare that to the billions of neurons that exist inside your head. Now, we probably can't get away with less than that. Let's go ahead and try to do two neurons and see what happens. Yeah, that's just not gonna happen, right? So for this particular problem, all you need is three neurons. Two won't cut it. Let's play around some more. Let's try a more challenging data set, okay? So here's a spiral pattern. And you can tell this is gonna be harder because we can't just say stuff in this corner is gonna be this, uh, this classification. Like we need a much more finer grained way of like identifying these individual spirals. And again, we're going to see if we can just train a neural network to figure that rule out on its own. And well, obviously two neurons won't cut it. Let's go back to four. Let's see if that's enough. I bet it isn't. Yeah, you can see it's, it's trying, but it's really struggling. We can let this run for a while and you can see it's starting to kind of get there. You know, the, uh, the blue areas are converging on some blue areas and it's, it's really trying hard, but it's just not enough neurons to pull this one off. Let's go ahead and add another layer. Let's see if that helps. You can see it's doing more complicated things now that it has more neurons to work with, but still can't quite get to where it needs to be. Let's add a couple more neurons to each layer. Generally speaking, you can either add more neurons to a layer or add more layers. It's uh, gonna produce the same results, but it might affect the, uh, the speed in which it converges, depending on which approach you take. It's just fascinating watching this work, isn't it? All right, this one got stuck. It still can't quite pull it off. Let's add one more layer. This is actually a very common pattern you'll see. You start off with a lot of layers at first and you kind of like narrow them down as you go. Okay, so we're gonna go to a initial input layer of six neurons to a hidden layer of four neurons and then a layer of two neurons, which will ultimately produce a binary output at the end. Ooh, I think it's getting there. Here we go. Wow. Okay, so technically, I mean, it's still kind of like refining itself, but it kind of did it, right? I mean, now this is what we would call overfitting to some extent, you know? I mean, obviously it has these like tendrils that are kind of cutting through here, and that's not really part of the pattern we're looking for. It's still going though. Those tendrils are kind of getting weaker and weaker. So, you know, it still doesn't have quite enough neurons to do exactly the thing that we would do intuitively. But, I mean, still, I mean, this is a pretty complicated classification problem. It figured it out. It may be overfitting a little bit, but it figured it out. And all we have is, what, uh, 12 neurons here? I mean, that's insane, right? Now, another thing I want to talk about here, too, is that it kind of illustrates the fact that once you get into multiple layers, it becomes very hard to intuitively understand what's going on inside the neural network. This gets kind of spooky, you know? I mean, what does this shape really mean? I mean, once you have enough neurons, it's kind of hard to fit inside your own head what these patterns all really represent. I mean, the first layer is pretty straightforward. You know, it's basically breaking up the image into different sections. But as you get into these hidden layers, Things start to get a little bit weird as they get combined together. Uh, let's go ahead and add one more, shall we? Actually, let's add two more to this output layer and add one more layer at the end. Let's see if that helps things converge a little bit more quickly. Yeah. All right, starting to struggle a little bit. I 
See that? Like it's actually got a spiral shape going on here now. So with those extra neurons, it was able to do something more interesting. We still have this, uh, this little spike here that's doing the wrong thing, and it can't seem to quite think its way out of that one. If you gave it a few more neurons though, it might be able to figure it out. These ones are also misclassified, but I find it interesting that it actually created a spiral pattern here on its own. So maybe with a few more neurons or one more layer, you could actually uh, create an even better solution. But I will leave that as an exercise for you. Now that you know how to play around with this, I really encourage you to just mess around with it and see what kind of results you can get. This spiral pattern is in particular an interesting problem. Uh, just to explain some of the other parameters here, we're doing a classification here. Uh, that's what we're gonna be doing throughout this section. Uh, the activation function, we talked about not using a step function and using something else. Uh, some other ones that are popular, ReLU is actually very popular right now. Uh, realization function we haven't talked about yet. Uh, the learning rate is just basically the step size in the gradient descents that we're doing. So you can adjust that if you want to as well. Let's see if ReLU actually makes a difference. Hmm. I would expect it to just, you know, affect the speed. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's pretty darn close to what we want, right? I mean, there's, apart from this little tiny spike here, which isn't really even there, it's a little bit of overfitting going there, but we have basically created that spiral shape just out of this handful of neurons. God, I could do this all day, guys, and, and I, ho I hope you will too. You know, just play around with this. It's so much fun, and it gives you such a concrete understanding of what's going under the hood. I mean, look at this hidden layer here. That's where these spiral shapes are starting to emerge and come together. And when you think about the fact that your brain works in very much the same way, it's quite literally mind-blowing. Anyway, mess around with this. It's a really great exercise, and I hope you have some fun with it.